Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Trader API and requesting historical data. Now, these are some of the packages we're going to require. Please make sure that you insert your app key and your secret code. You're also going to need your refresh and access token along with this function called check access token. If you don't have these, please see part two of this series called authentication. And from that script, you'll be able to generate your tokens and copy this function as well. Please make sure that you assign those variables and bring in this function. Now to get price history from this API, there's a couple of variables that we need to go over. All these fields will be added onto this function that we created to get price history from the API. So first and foremost, we need our symbol. The documentation states that we need an equity symbol to be inserted. But as you will see from our examples, we are able to bring in price history for futures, indices, and forex pairs. No price history is yet available for options, and I'm not sure if that feature is going to change in the future but as of now we're not able to bring in price history for the options we also need to set the period type which can be day month year or year to date and depending on what you choose you will need to be careful on stating the following three parameters called period frequency type and frequency so for example if you choose year for period we can choose any of these in line 87 so we can choose one year two years all the way up to 20 also if you choose year for the frequency type we can only choose daily weekly or monthly and then depending on the frequency type, if you choose daily, for example, for frequency, we can only choose one. You'll need to be cautious on setting these so that you don't go over the limits. And what I mean by that is if we choose day, we can't go over 10 without triggering an error. And once you have these fields set, we can also insert a start and end date. We also have a flag if you need extended hours data and if you need the previous close. Now I also added this last field called as XTS, which can be set to true or false. You will need to set this to true if you wanna return an XTS object or false if you just want a data frame. And I did this because I'll be collecting the data and creating a database. So a data frame for me might be useful for that. But if I'm analyzing data, I might want to use an XTS object. Now let's go over the actual function. So our function is first going to check if you inserted a start and end date. It's gonna take care of the formatting for you. So for the start date, it's gonna start at the market open and the end date should end at the end of the session. And you might wanna modify this if you need extended hours, but we'll just set it to the end of the market session. And the start and end date are not required, but I'll show you later down the script on why you should use these. Now we can build our URL for our get request. And depending on what you pass in, it'll create a string and leave out the fields that are not required. Next, we're gonna check our access token to make sure that it's still valid and update it if it needs to. We're gonna pass in our URL that we created and also our access token. Once we get a response, we need to check that to make sure that the status code is 200. And if that's the case, we need to extract the content from our page. So that's gonna get assigned to table. And as you will see from the options, even though we get a status code of 200, it returns an empty list. So we also need to verify that our table is not empty. And if it's not empty, we're gonna go ahead and extract our candles data and return it as a data frame. Now, if the user wants this as an XDS object, we're first gonna check if the frequency type is in minutes, as our timestamps will include hours, minutes, and seconds. So I used as POSIX CT for that. If the frequency type is not in minutes, we can order by as date. So these two blocks are essentially the same. The only thing that changed was the order by. So we're gonna create an XCS object if the user needs it. And we also need to check if they requested the previous close. I initially thought that it would return the previous close for all the bars, but it just returns the previous bar from our very first observation in our data. So I'm not really sure how useful that will be, but I added it since it was available through the API. So we're gonna attach our previous close to our bars. Now, if the user does not want an XCS object, then we're just gonna assign our data frame into bars. We're gonna add the previous close if that flag is set to true. We're gonna add our symbol as a column, and that will be our final output. If our response doesn't have any candle data, it's going to print out this message stating that the get request was successful, but there was no bars to return. So it's just going to assign null into bars. And you'll also see an error message if the page status code is not 200. And you'll most likely see this message if the periodicity and the periods are off or if your access token is not valid. So just make sure that you're assigning things properly. And at the very end, we're just gonna return bars, whether it's an XCS object or a data frame. Once you have assigned this function, you can go to the following block. Now the required fields are always gonna be the symbol, the period type, the period, the frequency, and the frequency type. So we're gonna go through some examples in case you're wondering how to use these. The first part is extracting XTS objects. And I have two examples that are just gonna extract data frames. I'm gonna run this block and I'll go through each of these. 
All right, so for our first example, we're requesting 20 years of daily data for Tesla. So we'll take a look at XTS1. So there's no data before 629-2010. So that's why I didn't return the full 20 years. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we see that we have the latest bar for the stock. Now for XCS2, we're gonna request 10 days of one minute data for SPY. We are also gonna need extended hours data and return this as an XTS. So for XCS2, the timestamps will always be in New York time. We see that we have a start time at 7 a.m., which is pre-market and the last bar marks the end of the post-market session. Now, since we're only able to get 10 days of one minute data, we can always request more in periods of 10. I haven't tried and checked how far back we can go, but for the next example, we're gonna pass in this very first timestamp as a date, and we're gonna request 10 more days of one minute data by passing in that date minus one day as our end date. So if we take a look at XCS3, and we scroll all the way to the bottom, we see that our data ends on 412 and then our previous XTS starts on 415. That's how you'll be able to request more data if you choose to. For our next example, we're gonna request six months of weekly data for the ES futures. And this time around, we're gonna add the previous close to see what that looks like. So for XTS4, as I mentioned, it only returns the previous close for the very first observation. And for weekly data, I guess the timestamps are indexed at the start of the week. You can insert the symbol this way. So if you want the September contract, just make sure that you add the U and the two digit year to your symbol. Now I did try to get options by passing in the symbol and I was only requesting one day of five minute data. And even though our get request was successful, there was no bars to return. So I'm really hoping that they do add this feature later on as this would be extremely useful. But as of now, no data is being returned. Let's take a look at two examples that involve returning data frames. For this instance, we're gonna request year to date data on a daily basis for the SPX. And if we take a look at DF1, it's gonna return it in this format, which should be easy to upload in the database. Now we're also able to get Forex pairs. So for our final request, we're gonna bring in this Forex pair. We're gonna request three years of monthly data. And if we take a look at DF2, we have 30 entries. So that's how you would use this function to request data for the Trader API. And with that guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.